let's take a look at the four types of social media channels. First, we have social networks. These are social channels built around profiles of the user. So we're talking about things like Facebook, um, Twitter, Pinterest, those social networks that users use to create their own mini websites or profiles. Uh, we have content creation, so using social networks to create content. This We'll dive into more of this in subsequent slides, but things like videos and photos. And we talked about content strategy for a brand. We've talked about um, video marketing and content creation there. So this is just doing that in the social sphere. Bookmarking and aggregating, these are curating and sharing content that you know we gather around the web and putting that out to our networks. And finally, location. This is a subset of social networks that are just solely based on location, and we'll look at examples of those as well. First, let's take a look at social, network, uh, social networks um, with a Facebook example. There are many ways that brands can use Facebook to market themselves and to engage with their, their customers and consumers. First, we've got pages. So a brand can make their own page. It looks very much like a user's profile. There's an example of this in the text. Um, and you can find there are endless, it seems, brands on social networks. Uh, so you can search for one of your favorite brands and check out their page. It really, again, looks like a user's profile. So you've got the news feed, you've got your header photo, you've got your profile photo and all of that. And you can make that reflective of your brand personality and make that match your other marketing assets. We talked about um, YouTube channels being able to do this. The same is true here. There are apps in many social networks that people use. Uh, games are a big one in Facebook. And brands can also use games and advertise in those as well. Um, there have been historical cases of people using things like Farmville to launch products, um, having their own uh, spaces in that game. And that's just one example. There are lots of ways that you can partner with Facebook to use their games and with other social networks, same thing, to market your, your product, a new launch, uh, just a branded message. There are myriad ways that you can harness that. Promotions and competitions are fun in the social channels. So on Facebook, uh, for example, you could have people upload or interact um, with your, you could have them upload videos or photos or whatever you want um, and have them interact with your brand and then choose a winner. So before social media, we could still do this online, uh, but now it's a lot easier for both the user and the brand to connect where the user already is. Facebook Connect is um, another mechanism that we can connect, <laughs> as the name says, uh, with the, the Facebook um, audience. So you can have people log in with their Facebook credentials to your app or whatever it is that you put out there um, and then you know, get access to their friends and you know, their data, really. Uh, liking is... A, a, a key performance indicator that we often use when we talk about social media uh, is a very top line measurement of engagement. So, you know, you can measure likes, you can encourage people to like your content, you can see what content they like and they don't like with this mechanism. And then finally, uh, even though it's really the sort of heart of this social media platform, is the newsfeed. And we can advertise in the newsfeed. Uh, you want to be careful about doing that. People go there to see news on their friends and the, the brands and the news outlets and things that they're following. So you don't want to interrupt that with content that they're not really looking for. So you want to make sure that you're very, very relevant if you're in the news feed. Content creation. Uh, we, uh, as again, we've talked a lot about content creation in this course. Um, but just in terms of social media, think about having people create images. Um, Instagram is, you know, made specifically for this, and brands are starting to use Instagram and be where people are already looking for pictures with photos. The interesting thing here is that you can't, because of the way that Instagram 
renders things and the way that people are using it. Brands find that when they do sort of a lower quality image or something that's just more off the cuff and not a branded message, they're getting more success. So something that reflects the, the spirit and personality of your brand, but not, you know, you don't want to put your logo up in Instagram. People are going to either ignore it um, at, at best or get annoyed. Um, same with videos. We, we've talked a lot about video content. And so again, social provides a way to create, share, um, and go viral with your video content or even brands can share other video uh, content in social and provide value to the users there. Blogging um, is a great way to get your message out there and maybe you can showcase company leadership uh, with this. So you've got you know blog posts that you can do on your website you can post them to social media to get traffic there we talked a lot about that in the in the content lecture um, corporate blogging is a good way to keep people updated on what's going on in your company people really like a sort of behind the scenes look it lends authenticity and social media is all about that authentic message and so this lends itself well here of putting your blogs into the social sphere and then driving people back to your website. And then we have microblogging, which Twitter uh, is a great example of. So getting news out there through things like Twitter, having people retweet your messages and, and driving people back to the website that way. Finally, podcasting is something that brands might want to consider or consider tapping into. So podcasts allow you to tap into really niche audiences that are really passionate about that content that they're listening to. Um, and then we've also got, you know, video podcasts now. Um, so you can tap into to that too, right? So you can get your video message out there if you want. Um, you've got that audience that's really passionate and your message can be right in the middle of that content. So ways to think about how to use your content and to get your content in front of the audience through through content creation on social. Bookmarking and aggregating platforms and sites are another way that brands can tap into this sort of power of sharing. Um, so here users find stuff around the web, um, aggregate it, share it with their networks, and um, the content that's most popular goes to the top. Right, so if our content is popular, as you can see here on Delicious, we can you know, get to the top and get that further out there. A lot of the power of social is really getting more eyeballs on your content and then linking back to your own owned media as a, as a marketer. So getting people back to your site. Uh, or to your social network site or whatever it is, right? Your Facebook profile or your channel on YouTube, wherever you want to point them. Location in social media, we will talk a lot about location-based things in mobile marketing, uh, and we've talked about location in, in other um, lectures in this course, but there are some social networks that are just based on location. Foursquare is one where users get points um, and you know it's a sort of gamification of just going to different places right so um, brands businesses can make a location on Foursquare and then encourage people to check in uh, this is great you can get data on check-ins and things like that and analyze um, people's behaviors as they're checking in to different locations and, and things. Facebook Places does the same thing and there are more and more um, social networks that are adding this sort of mobile location-based apps or functionality to their networks because this is such a huge area for marketers.